This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by promoter Mark Nielsen. Mark, how are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you, Danny. Good speaking to you again. And you um, got your latest show coming up uh, July the 1st at York Hall in Bethnal Green, the iconic York Hall, of course. Just, just tell us what we can expect from that. I know the, the top of the bill is obviously Jack McCann, but uh, just tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, well, it's our sixth show of the year already, and it's um, how quick that's gone. I think we had, went through a period of five show, um, four shows in five weeks, and this is our sixth, so hoping to have 12 by the end of the year. So this will be our last one for, before the summer. In all honesty, it's a cracking one as well. You know, we've got Jack McGowan versus Christopher Great main event. And I don't, for people who don't know, this guy's coming over from Italy, former Italian champion, fought for international titles a couple of times, um, lost the pro down a couple of fights ago. Obviously, everyone knows from the Marku fight. And the guy's fought in a few 10 rounders. So this is, you know, a sixth fight for Jack McGann. It's a real step up for him. And it shows the intent. You know, Martin Murray in the training camp, they see something in him. He's got this, you know, great sort of backstory with his dad running this UFC gym with Michael Bisping and all that. So, of course, he's attracting all the celebrities as well. So everyone's talking about Jack McGann. I think we've got Tom Hardy coming, Stephen Graham coming, oh. John, John Conti's coming. So it's just sort of bringing some, some of the celebs to your call, which is nice to see. Well, I hope that's a guarantee because if anyone's watching this and turns up and they don't get to see Tom Hardy, they're going to be disappointed now. <laughs> Yeah, they can ask me for a refund, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. And yeah. you said uh, Martin Murray in the camp. Well, what has he been saying about Jack? Well, they think he's a real prospect. He never had a massive amateur background. He's just, you know, he's come from an MMA, but um, they, they think he's got something special. We saw him already in our April show um, in an English eliminator against um, Brennan. And that was a really good fight. You know, he was down in the second round for the first time in his career but got up to stop Brendan who's very durable in the fourth so, and, and you know you could see he's got it and you've been around boxing Danny you know sometimes you can see these kids some of them got these great records or good amateurs but sometimes they've seen you know, some of them have got it and he seems to have it all and he's a good talker good looking lad he's got this following behind him but he can back it up in the ring which is always good so he sort of seems to tick every box he's got the Warrens behind him you know so you know I'm sure he's going to be on going on to bigger and better things in not too distant future it's good that someone like the the Warrens you mentioned there, and obviously he's with Mike Murray as well. He's got this celebrity style kind of uh, circle as well. He's still going out on a, a York Hall show, you know, the the home of boxing in the UK. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people at his sort of stage will are all sort of looking for these big TV deals, perhaps to get on a box or get signed by the matchroom so they want to zone and stuff. But he's doing it nice and steady, no rush, building up his experience and stepping up rather than just padding out. You know, it's a six five, and he's in a 50-50 against a really good guy. So it just shows the intent. He's not messing about. He's not, not doing it for the just to get the record. He wants to go places and really thinks he can, but doing his time, doing it, doing it in front of a good home crowd. And, you know, your call. Yeah, it's not on the big TV across, you know, getting broadcast to millions, but it's a cracking venue if you're a boxer. I mean, the boxers love fighting there because it feels like the crowd are right on the ringside. You know, I mean, and as a promoter, they've all promoted there. So it's iconic for not for the boxers, the managers, but for me as a promoter, you know, because they've all... Back before Frank Warren, the old cartel days, they were still, you know, so it's a real history, the place there. So good on Jack McGann. So, you know, he's got to get, you know, he's stepping up in class. Let's see if, see if he's got it and time will tell. And if he comes through this on July the 1st, will it be the English title fight next? Well, we're going to speak to his camp because it depends who's what's available, what's vacant, um, who's up for challenging, what defence is already lined up. But we'll certainly be looking up for some decent titles because this is a, a ten, scheduled 10 rounder. Mm. He's fighting and beating people with winning records. So he's eligible for most of the, some the big domestic titles. Um, so if it's available, yeah. So we're, this is the last one this side of summer. We're back out September, October. And we're looking for, you know, big title fights, someone like him, main event and decent title fight on Box Nation. So, yeah, that's exciting for him. Oh, great stuff. And further down the bill, who else are we going to be looking out for? It's a really interesting card. We've got some 50-50s. You know, we've got Jordan Dujan versus Ryan Maycock, you know, a six and one versus a five and one. So it's a proper 50-50. You don't get that a lot, do you? You know, usually they go past those sort of numbers and then they have to fight each other for title fights. But, you know, we want to sort of put, spread the card with some prospects, but also with some good 50-50s. We've got James Hennigan, who's actually a Queensbury um, boxer, fighting on our card as well. They reckon he's one of the sort of best prospects around at the moment at middleweight. 
and he's a 5-0. and But, you know, we've got a couple of debuts. I've got Kieran Flanagan, was some with Mickey Elliott a few years ago and didn't fight for one minute or another. He's now back and everyone in the gym is saying he's got titles written all over him. Also, another one we've got, um, Tyson Kajawa, um, Nigerian, and we're working with his promoter, his manager, Sean Murray, who's sort of building an academy of foreign fighters over here and building them up yeah. through the, you know, because he's like a, an ex or two time Nigerian champion. Um, and and he's fought some good, credible opposition as well. He's sort of like um, 130 odd out of his 40. He's really good. He's come over here. We've seen him spar. We've got a promotional deal with him. He, he came out and did his first run at our Swindon show. Now is it your call? And this this kid, well, nobody would have heard of him yet, Tozin Gajawa, but they certainly soon will have. And we've got like Ernie Rutherford. He's going to pack a place out. You know, he sounds like four or 500 tickets. So that place would be buzzing when someone like him's on. And some other good ones as well, Finley, Judd, Bo, Bo Reynolds, you know. So we've got just a really, really good sort of mixture on the card. But 10 good fights, you know, some really cracking 50-50s, some international fights, a bit of everything for everyone. It's interesting what you say about 50-50s because there's been a bit of a thing recently, certainly on social media, that with all these different promoters now having TV deals and having to match their fighters not against each other because obviously they want to stay within their own platform, we're seeing less kind of competitive fights on those TV shows. So would you say there's kind of the, the effect of that is that to see genuine competitive contests, it, it is the small hall shows now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, I think small hall, I think that's a great title, but I think we're probably a step above that. You know, there's the, there's the guys, uh, no disrespect to them, are doing four fight cards in a hotel boring on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And that's what I call small hall. You know, we're, we're trying to step above that, doing a bit different, but I get your point. And, and it's difficult, you know, to get some, to go and watch some of the 50s. You know, you look on box rec, as we in the boxing game will do, there's so many of these shows and it's the left-hand column versus or the right-hand column. We know who's going to win every fight 90% yeah. of the time. And that's, you know, and, you know, 95% of the venue will be filled with just the boxers, blokes, people he sold tickets to. But actually, if you're a boxing fan, you want to go and see some 50-50s. So we're telling these guys now, certainly after COVID, Times have passed where you're getting these padded records. And I remember seeing guys sparring who were 14 and 0, 15 and 0, seeing them sparring, getting taken apart by average guys. So I think those, those days are gone. And it's a case of let's just let's not mess it about. There's over a thousand professional boxers here. If you want to be on our cards and you know you want to get on the TV, get on the box nation, then you know you're going to need to step up and we're going to start stepping you up earlier. And don't get me wrong. There's a place for these, you know, on the, when you're one and oh, two and oh, three and oh, yeah. you can't be throwing them in a 50 50 really then because they're, you know, they get a couple of losses or a loss on their second or third fight. Their career's over before it's even started really because they'll be demoralized or well, they drift away. So you've got to give them the experience from going from the amateurs to pro. So there's a place for the, the home fights with a winning record against a journeyman. But when you start getting four, five, six, seven and oh, you need to start stepping it up. You know, by the time you're getting to 8, 9, 10 and 0, you should be either fighting for titles or fighting in good 50-50s with the next step being a title. And then that's what that's what we want to do. It's, you know, easier said than done. That's the idea. So if we work, work to that plan, more often than not, we're getting close to it. But, you know, sometimes circumstances change. Apart from Jack McGann, who would you say is going to, your next fighter to kind of break through to that national stage? Well, there's quite a lot we're actually working with. Um, I mean, we're working with Alfie Warren and Warren Bucks, boxing management guys, and they've got like a stable of 30 odd boxers. You know, Nathan Mizon, um, Jordan Dujon, we've got Finley Judd. We, there's, there's like a list of these guys mm. who are starting to step up. So we've only been sort of working and back in, you know, we've been doing our regional shows, Swindon, Gloucester, Bracknell. Now we're coming over to London and stepping up the caliber. We've got the Box Nation. And it's opened a lot of doors. There's nobody we're saying we're jumping in now for big titles. You've got something like your Jack McGann's, and there's a couple of others like that. But there's a lot who were two or three fights away. So by the time you get to our second or third show before the end of the year, there's some you know really big. There's some really big fights about. And so July the first, uh, still tickets available. Yeah, still tickets available. Doors open at five. First fight at six. You know, but this is the a really good show first of many as i said we're looking at probably another half a dozen before the end of the year and in all honesty danny we started off thinking if we get six or eight this year that'd be great because we would normally normally do three or four we're on 12 already but we're probably <laughs> wow. but what's happening it's we've got the sort of the, the infrastructure right i've got you know my nephew he's always been sort of helping out in the box and is now full-time permanent as an office manager i've got 
Jared Hayter who's with us full time. I've got PR or people on retainers or whatever. So we're now growing with the boxing. So we've got the, so we can then pick it up and put, you know, take the model and put it in. And because I'm a businessman by day, I can run a tight financial model. They can make it work. So everyone gets paid. And you hear these shows getting, there's more cancellations again next week. When it comes to matching, we're, we know a week or two before, if we've just got, got a slot on the on the card, it'll get it sorted out because another show's getting cancelled somewhere else. But we're sort of growing. And I think with a dozen shows scheduled for this year, weirdly, if you look at the, surprisingly, I should say, if you look at um, the number of promoters out there, there's only like 50 promoters in the UK. And if you take out the big, you know, the, the Zones, the, the Warrens, the Dennis Hobson at Fight Zone, the Wasserman, we're probably top six now, right on the fringes. You know, we're a different budget. It's different. North Pushing for the Champions but, League. Yeah, but we're, we're um, I tell you, we're, we're up there. We're up in the, you know, in the, in the promotions for sure. Oh, good stuff. And as you said, for people that can't get a ticket, Box Nation will be broadcasting the event. Not this one, actually, because oh, we okay. did a trial. Sorry, sorry, Danny. We did a we did a trial event in April. Worked really well. The numbers were really good. The, the, the production was really good. And I quite proud actually watching it back on Box Nation when I recorded it, thinking that looked really good. It looked like a proper boxing show. We're there, right? So we know what we're doing. We've got we tick over the box now. And if I'm first and foremost a boxing fan and I'm enjoying it sat at ringside, then I know it's all right. So we're, we're, we're doing Box Nation have got an appetite for it. They want to get involved with a promoter. We've done a trial one. We're in discussions with now. We're looking at doing a, a long-term deal starting from our September shows, but they're all going to be televised. The details to come in the future, but we're working on just some more hurdles to jump over, a couple of dot and I's and cross and T's, but you know, exciting times. We're looking at new venues, probably another couple of couple of shows. We're one of like, the busiest promoters in the country at the moment. <laughs> but nice to have the budget of some of the big guys, but um, we're getting there. That time will come, I'm sure. And then uh, we'll, we'll start charging you to appear on, on seconds. <laughs> <out of that. laughs> Not before. No, re really appreciate it, mate. And I hope it all goes well on the 1st of July. And yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks, Danny. It was good speaking to you.